you just start off by telling me what you're hoping to achieve or what you're looking for? Well, it's funny because um, I grew up where I grew up and I've always taken my childhood for granted. But uh, and I think this must happen in a lot of families. Me and my sisters lost our mum a couple of years ago. And just before Covid, we started going through all of the family albums and my mum used to keep everything. And um, we suddenly started to realise that um, we'd lost contact with our own childhoods a lot. Um, and we started getting up, you know, thinking of old memories and things like that and wishing, so wishing that we'd had the foresight to interview my mum and dad when they were alive because their story was worth telling and yet we'll lose it if we don't all try and rack our memories and that's what I'm trying to do now is reach out to other what I call kids of the radar generation kids who grew up in Malvern um, which was an extraordinary place where radar was developed and a lot of historians say you know the Malvern radar scientists war every bit as dramatically as did the code breakers at Bletchley Park for instance and yet this is a history that will be lost and forgotten because it was so top secret they never spoke about it and we kids grew up knowing that we should never ask about it and so I'm reaching out to other kids my generation we're not so much kids anymore but you get my drift um, and uh, you know when we uh, pop our clogs the story of Malvern and Radar and the amazing families that kept Radar going and did Churchill's job for him during the war, that will be forgotten. Um, and it's never been celebrated properly. And that's why I just want to knit together lots of people's different memories of their own childhoods and maybe of some of the things their mums and dads told them about their vital Radar war work. And when you started researching this, because it was a subject that people didn't speak about, how have you managed to unearth some either people or the, the children of people that were involved in this? Well, that's the big problem, I think. I mean, my dad never spoke about it. Uh, and whenever we, my, uh, us kids asked him, my mother would always shut us down. Daddy can't talk about that. That's what he did in the war and it's top secret. And she'd signed the Official Secrets Act too. Um, and so that was what was difficult. But when he got very much older, towards the end of his life, I, re I do remember him telling us one story. Um, and if I just prodded him further, he might have come out with a few others. He said that um, once uh, in, during the war, um, he had to go up in uh, an aircraft with his great mate, Tony Gunter Smith, who uh, lived for a long time in the Oxfordshire area. Um, and they used to do sorties uh, out across the Welsh coast, um, trying to see if radar could actually detect submarines under the water. Obviously, this was vital, vital test of early radar. Um, and if they thought they saw a submarine, like a little blip on a cathode ray tube screen, uh, they would drop a, a low power depth charge to see how near they came to pinpointing that submarine. Well, the Royal Navy lent them a sub and um, out they went uh, over, the, over the sea and they, uh, they finally got a blip on this cathode ray tube. My father dropped the depth charge and then the plane went out. And by the time it circled back, um, the, the submarine had surfaced and all the submariners had come out on the top of the deck and they were waving their fist angrily at my dad's plane because they had been so accurate in dropping that depth charge that it had blown out every rivet on the submarine. It was taking on water and wow. had to be towed back into Portsmouth. So uh, that was the sort of one of those amazing little anecdotes of early radar. Um, and uh, I just wish I'd asked him for other anecdotes because there must be so many. So that's what I'm trying to do is anyone listening who was part of that more than set up or anywhere else come to the app who's got these wonderful anecdotes to tell let's share them share some photographs too and tell their story it's phenomenal as well isn't it how different rural england here in shropshire we've got training centers up in nestcliff and there's satellite dishes tucked behind hills yeah. there's various air, airport bases and runways in fields in parts of shropshire and and border down malvern and it's amazing that the rural parts of the country played such a significant part in the war effort. Oh, yes. I mean, my father's story starts Worth Matravers in Dorset, which is very near Swanage. That's where he was first sent when he wanted to volunteer for the RAF and wasn't allowed because he got a physics degree. They said, no, you've got to go on vital war work. And they put him on a train to this place he'd never heard of in his life called Worth Matravers and he found himself working under a team headed by Bernard Lovell who turned out to be later obviously Sir Bernard Lovell who founded um, Jodrell Bank. Um, so he found himself you know doing this war work that 
waves to each other um, across a sort of aircraft hangar to see if they could pick up blips on a cathode ray tube. Um, and that was what radar was in those days. And apparently the Germans uh, found out after a while there were these young men in civilian clothes working on something. The Germans suspected that it was radar um, and a, a raid was planned. And so Churchill said, I've got to find somewhere much safer for my radar scientists. And he sort of you know, he consulted a few experts and they came up with Malvern. And so overnight, um, Churchill said they'll, the Germans will never find them in Malvern. Malvern's in the middle of nowhere, you know, behind all these hills. Um, and of course, they never did find them. Father was put on a, a fleet of buses. All of their radar equipment was heard loaded into a fleet of Pickford vans, apparently, and they were driven up to Malvern. They'd never heard of in their lives before either. All of the boys in Malvern College were overnight evacuated to Eton, and my father spent his first night there in House Five in Malvern College, where he stayed until the end of the war. <laughs>